heart. So where is God? Yes, yes, there are many ways of saying where God is, but to say God is in your own heart. And on the day of your first communion, you are going to receive in an even deeper way the life and the love of Christ Jesus into your hearts. So in many ways, we can say that all of you are Jesus people and that we are the disciples, we are the followers of the Lord Jesus, that the love of Jesus is deep in our hearts and it'll be seen in a most, most special way on the day of your first communion. And then what Jesus asks of each and every one of us is for us to bring the love of Jesus, which we receive at the altar of God, out into our neighborhood, out into our family life, that we are the body of Christ. When Jesus now thinks, looks at us to be his presence in the world, that we are the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus. Now tell me, when we think about your first communion, who can tell me when the first mass was? Yes. Who can tell me? Maybe that's a different, yes. When Jesus died, Jesus died on Good Friday. What happened on the night before Jesus died? They had the last meal, the last supper, which took place on the night before Jesus died because Jesus wanted us to know that he's going to be with us all days until the end of time. So he's going to be with us in a new way in the sacrament of, of the Eucharist. What were you, were you going to say? Okay, very good. So when Jesus, at the Last Supper on the night before he died, he took bread into his hands. Who can tell me what Jesus said when he had the bread in his hands? Yes. Yes, very, very good. He said to take and to eat, that this is my body. Very, very good. And then Jesus took a cup. What do we call the cup which we place? Yes. Excellent. Yes, that cup is a chalice. So that Jesus had the chalice in his hands and it was filled with wine. What did Jesus say? Yes. Very, very good. Yes, Jesus said, take and to drink. This is my blood. And then what was the next thing that Jesus said? <clears throat> after he said at the Last Supper on the night before he died. Yes. Yes, very, very good. He said, do this in memory of me. So if anyone asks you, why do you come to Mass Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, it is because we are doing what Jesus asked us to do on the night before he died when he said, do this as you said, in memory of, of me. And the prayers that the priest says during the Eucharistic prayer, when that bread and wine becomes the body and blood of the Lord Jesus, he is saying the words that Jesus said at the Last Supper. That is the special grace that is given to a priest on the day of his ordination to be able to use the power that Jesus had in changing bread and wine into his body and blood. So that during the Eucharistic prayer, I will say, over the bread that this is my body, and over the, the chalice that is filled with wine, this is my blood, and then to take and eat, to take and drink, and then do this in memory of me. <clears throat> and that anticip Now the, the communion, the mass, is a sacrament. Let's hear everyone say sacrament. Sacrament. Sacraments are the special ways that we encounter, that we come to know the Lord Jesus most deeply in our lives. Who can tell me, of all you brilliant people, how many sacraments there are? Gold star, if you can tell me, yes. Yes. Seven, you are absolutely right. There are seven sacraments, and they are the special ways that we encounter the Lord Jesus in our lives. 
Now my question to you, how many sacraments <coughs> have you already received? Yes. Two. Two, what would they be? What would they be, yes? What would they be? Reconciliation, and what was the sacrament even before reconciliation, yes? Baptize, baptism. So it's very important <clears throat> that the first sacrament that we've all received, and for most of us, when you were just an infant, even before you were aware of it, that your mom and dad brought you to church for the very first time because they wanted you to be specially blessed by our loving God, to be a beloved son of God, to be a loved, beloved daughter of God and so that the priest or deacon baptized you. Now we either baptize you, can I use you as an example? By pouring water on the top of your head, or the other way is when you were an infant to place yourself right in the baptismal water, what we call immersion. Your head would not go into water, but your whole body would be, and this special water is holy water, and this water is the life and the love of Christ Jesus that is within you. So from the day of your baptism until this day and all the days of your life, the most important thing I want you to know is that you are God's beloved son, that you are God's beloved daughter. And that's deep in your heart. <clears throat> yes, there are days we get, do you ever get disappointed? Yeah, we all get disappointed at times. We have get set and sometimes we're discouraged. But even when we're disappointed or a little discouraged, what I want you to know is that you are always, all times, God's beloved son, God's beloved daughter. God always, always goes with you in a special way. I want you to know that there's nothing that you can do in your whole life that's going to stop God from, from loving you. You boys are well behaved right back there when I can't see you, aren't you? I'm sure, without a doubt. Your moms and dads will watch you for me. So to be able to see that we are God's beloved sons, that we are God's beloved daughters all the days of our life, that is the first sacrament that we have received. Then most of you, or perhaps have all of you received the sacrament of reconciliation. Yes, who can tell me what happened during the sacrament of reconciliation? Yes. Pardon me? Yes, it is confession, yes. We confess our sins, and God always, always forgives our sins. Now, are any of us perfect? No. Yes, you're enthusiastic about that. And that's true. So do we all have to say sorry at times? Yes. Yes. And during the sacrament of reconciliation, we say sorry to the Lord. But every time, any time you say sorry to the Lord, you can absolutely be assured of God's forgiveness is showered upon you a thousand times over so that we believe in a loving and a forgiving God. I want you to know about that is who God is, that we can know that all the days of our life, God is always a loving and a forgiving God. And in the sacrament of reconciliation, we are showered with the forgiveness of our healing God. And having received, how many of you have received the Sacrament of Reconciliation then? Okay, very, very good. And so having received that, now you can put your hand down, it prepares you for this special day of First Communion. So of the seven sacraments, two of them you have already seen, I want you to know the most important of all the seven sacraments, all seven sacraments are important, I don't want to say any are unimportant, but the most important is communion. And the communion goes by two other different names. That you can call it the Mass, or you can call it the Eucharist. Now, if you can say the Eucharist, let's hear you say the Eucharist. Eucharist. Now, that's a Greek word, so now you all can speak a little Greek. And it's important to know what the word Eucharist means. 
And the Eucharist word means to give thanks. So when we come to pray at Mass, we gather to give thanks to the Lord our God for the many, many blessings of our lives. And how many different ways have your life been blessed? Who can tell me the blessings that you have received? Yes. Two. Which, what are the two blessings? Okay. Yes. Yes, reconciliation. But the blessings of your life even extend beyond the sacraments. I'm hoping you could look out and the pews and see some of the blessings of your life. Your moms and dads are wonderful, wonderful blessings to your life, are they not? How about your brothers and sisters? Are they blessings to your life? Yes. Most of the time or all the time? Uh, no. That, that meant to be a throwaway statement. I hope you love your brothers and sisters. To thank God for the home that you live in. Thank God for the clothes that you wear. Thank God for the beauty of sunshine for you each and every day to see your life is filled with blessings. What the way that I would like all of you to live your life is with an attitude of gratitude. Who can tell me what it means if you live your life with an attitude of gratitude? Yes, that you're grateful, that you say thank you many, many times during the day. And the most special, what? yes, you have a question. Oh, you don't have a brother. Okay, thank you, but you have two sisters. So you are blessed with two sisters. That's a wonderful, wonderful food. They're sometimes crazy. No need to give us too much information. <laughs> but, but anyway, to be able to see that your life is a blessing. Even though we are sad at times, we are all discouraged, may you also be have a big smile on your face often throughout the day and to be able to say thank you, that your life is, is a blessing and that you are especially blessed by our loving God too. And the best way that we say thank you to God is when we come to Mass and, and the meaning of the Mass and the prayers that we say is to give thanks to the Lord our God. Let me see, during the preface of the Mass, let's see how, your, how good your memory is. I say, the Lord be with you. And what do you say? Yes. Lift up your hearts. Yes. Very, very good. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Very, very, very good. So we say, let us give thanks to the Lord. That theme of thanksgiving runs throughout the Mass. And then when you receive communion, when I say the body of Christ, what are you going to tell me? What do you respond? Everyone together tell me. Amen. amen. And by saying amen, you are saying, I believe in the Lord Jesus. I give thanks to the Lord Jesus for the many blessings of my life, I give thanks to the Lord for receiving the First Communion deep into my heart and to my spirit. So just to kind of summarize, when did we say that the First Mass was celebrated? Yes, at the Last Supper on the night before Jesus died because he, because he knew he was going to die on the cross on Good Friday, he wanted to assure his followers all days until the end of time that he would be continued to be present to us. And Jesus is present to us sacramentally. And the, how many sacraments have we received? Are, how many sacraments are there? That's the first question. Yes. Seven. How many sacraments have we already received? Yes. Two. And the third sacrament we are going to receive is First Communion. Now, you can tell me when your moms and dads got married, they received a sa another sacrament, the sacrament of marriage. When I became a priest, I received the sacrament which we call holy orders. When a person is very sick, when we pray that they will receive the healing grace of the Lord, they receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. 
And then when you're in the ninth grade, you will receive the sacrament of confirmation by which you will be spirit-filled and that the love of the Lord will be with you even, even more deeply. So, but just to concentrate first of those seven sacraments, the first three, two of them you've already received, and then the third one you will receive on the day of your first communion. Now, tell me, do any of you have any questions for me as you prepare for this beautiful, beautiful day of your first Yes. How did Jesus know he was going to die? Because it was the plan of God our Father, Jesus' Father, God our Heavenly Father, that God's plan was for Jesus to die for love of us so that our sins can be forgiven. So it's important to understand, and even though it may be hard to, that Jesus willingly died because he wanted to show how much he loved us. He loved us so much that he would give his whole life for us so that our sins would be forgiven and that we would share in the Lord's risen life. Does that make sense? Excellent, yes. Was Jesus' dad Joseph God? No, Joseph was the foster father of Jesus. He was a very special person, he was a saint. Our parish is named after St. Joseph, but he was not God. There's only one God, and actually what can be a little confusing is that God has three persons, but there's just one God. There's God the Father. God the Father created the whole world out, out, out of love for us. And then there's God the Son, Jesus, who became one of us and lived and died for us. And the third person in God is the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of Jesus you will receive on the day you received on the day of your baptism and on the day of your first communion and all the days of your life. So there is only one God. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Make sense? Very, very good. You understand well the mystery of our faith then. Yes. Yes. So it's very important to know. So the question was, how was God created? <clears throat> Again, in mystery, God wasn't created. God always was. God always will be. Everything else in the world has a beginning and an end. But not God. God is what we call infinite, which is to say God has no beginning and no end. And so that God always, always was. Now you can say, well, that's hard to understand. Mysteries are hard to understand, but that is one of the deepest truths of our faith. Yes. Yes. You have two sisters, too. Congratulations. And you are always very good to your two sisters, I'm sure. I'll check with your sisters on that. Yes. Is God still alive? Yes, God is very much alive. God always, always will be alive. God is in the heart and the spirit of each and every one of you. That you are the bearers of God's love who are the bearers of God's life. Okay, one more question. Yeah. What does God look like? Very, very, very good, very, very good question. God, the Holy Spirit, God is as spirit doesn't have a face and bodies like ourselves. But when you can ask another way of asking what God looks like, you could look at every person in this church today. In some ways, they bear the love of God within them. So that God looks like your family, God looks like all of us gathered here, God looks like everyone in the church. But we have to, to understand in that because we are the body of Christ.
Christ, we are the presence of God. But God, God is spirit too, and that we really can't define them. I don't know if that answers the question, but it's a very, very deep question. Yes. Even if you stole something from the store, would God still love you? The answer to that is yes, yes, yes. However, Jesus would very much want you to say sorry, and if you have a chance to return that in some way, I think you should. Yes, Jesus would want you to. But I want you to know that there's nothing you can do that's going to stop God from loving you, but it's also important. Jesus wants us to be good and kind and loving and honest. Jesus doesn't want us to take things that doesn't belong to us. And Jesus, when we make mistakes or when we commit sin, Jesus wants us to say sorry because none of us are perfect. Okay, you can go back to your pews now with your moms and dads. <clears throat> So where are the practice hosts? Oh, gotcha. going to explain it to a couple to use a couple families as an example. Okay, boys and girls, we're back on our very best behavior when we are in church. Now, as we practice for the day of your first communion, we're going to practice in two ways. One way, I want to give you a couple of examples of when you come up for your first communion, your family is most welcome to kind of make a semicircle around you so that they can be very present uh, to you on the day of your first communion. And so I'm going to do that now with every, just a couple of families to give you an example, and then we're going to give everyone an opportunity to receive communion. But again, this isn't really communion. This is only bread. We haven't consecrated this bread. It is not uh, the body of Christ. So if to give a, maybe if you could come up here once, and maybe the rest of you could pretend you're part of her family, just for the, ex, just for the example that I want to give. So if you could stand right here, and then your family and all the members of your family. So if you have grandparents or brothers or sisters or whatever, you're welcome to bring them together on the day of First Communion. And the way that we do it, I would give communion to the First Communion first, and then the First Communion would stay in place right there while I give communion to everyone else in your family. And then after everyone has received it, then you would all go back uh, to the pew by, by this way. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you could get ready, how would you put your hands when you get ready for first communion? Okay. <clears throat> the body of Christ. And what do you say? Amen. And then you can put that in your mouth. And you would stay right there while you give communion to everyone else in your family. So I've given you the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, and the body of Christ. <clears throat> and then you would return to your old family by this pew. <clears throat> so did everyone see that and kind of get the swing of that? You know, it's, it's, you don't have to be a genius, that, but just the special person receiving would be the first communicant but it's also special for mom and dad, for grandparents or siblings or whoever you have with you. They would be most welcome to surround them 
there. <clears throat> and those members of the family would receive after the first communicant, and the first communicant would kind of stay in place until everyone in the family has received communion. If someone in your family that comes up doesn't wish to receive communion for any reason, they'd be welcome just to put their hands on their shoulders and I would give them a blessing, but that would just be a, a way for me of knowing that they prefer, prefer not to receive communion, but all are welcome uh, to receive communion on this most special day. Any questions that parents have for me on this very special day. I guess my most important input to, to moms and dads, and to, there's details around that which staff will go over, but more important than any detail is to really to be aware of the great mystery, to be aware of the great prayer, of the great celebration, to, for us to be focused on this day of, of First Communion. There will be opportunity for taking photographs. I would be glad after mass to stand up here and I'd love to have photograph taken with your first communicant, with the first communicant's family. But I would ask during first communion itself, it's not an opportunity, not a time to be taking the photographs. I really want us to be focused, not on performing, but on receiving the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Now, during these COVID days, we are only receiving the presence of Christ in the form of, of the body of Christ. I long for the day when we will be receiving the blood of Christ uh, again, but our bishop has to, to this point really kind of put a, a pause on that until we get in a healthier place. But to be assured when you receive the bread, you are receiving the body and blood of Christ, soul and divinity. There's nothing halfway about receiving communion when you just receive the body of Christ. Be assured that you are receiving the whole presence of the Lord Jesus. Questions, mysteries, problems? Very, very good. So we just want to go through it and practice. Maybe you can get the... And Gene, you can help too. So we invite the first communicants, just them themselves, to come up and just to receive practice communion. Now, when you receive communion, just, just wait one second. Okay, all eyes on me still. When you receive communion, I want you to do it. You'll have your hands out. And I want you to be looking at me when you receive your communion. When I say the body of Christ, I want you to respond enthusiastically, amen. And it's okay to have a smile on your face even because it is a moment of great joy as well as a moment of great reverence. Okay, boys and girls, your undivided attention again. Let's see how quiet everyone can be. We'll say if there's any first communicants or family members who uh, need or want or wish low gluten host, they are available. So if you have that allergy, you're welcome and you just have to let us know ahead of time, uh, but you would be able to receive your uh, First Communion or any communion always uh, with a glow, low gluten host. Okay, we invite the communicants to come up now to receive and put your hands out. And when I say... Okay, the body of Christ, what do you say? Okay. Excellent, excellent. The body of Christ. You stay right here and then put it in your mouth. Perfect. The 
body of Christ. What do you say? Very, very good. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Very good. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I say that. The body of Christ. Before you go, you, you put it in your mouth. Perfect. The body of Christ. Nope. Put it in your mouth. There and then you go, okay. Boys and girls, before you move, you need to put the communion host in your mouth and eat it, and then you, then you leave. The body of Christ. There you go. The body of Christ. 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 What do you say? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. What do you say? The body of Christ. Put it in your mouth first. You can reuse your hand. That's okay. Yes, that's fine. The body of Christ. There you go. Very good. You can go this way. The body of Christ. So put it in your mouth before you go. Put the whole thing. There you go. There you go. Put it in your mouth and eat it. There you go. The body of Christ. There you go. The body of Christ. What do you say? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. There you go. The body of Christ. What do you say? Amen. And put it in your mouth. <clears throat> there you go. The body of Christ. There you go. Okay, perfect. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. There you go. The body of Christ. Now put it in your mouth. There you go. The body of Christ. Very good. Put it in your mouth now. <coughs> good, good, good. The body of Christ. In your mouth now. There you go. Sure. The body of Christ. What are you going to Amen. Okay. Let's say you put it in your mouth. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That wasn't hard, was it? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Now, is there? Am I doing the whole thing? Is that? Uh, you, you, you don't have to. 
don't have a need for anything else. I'm doing the whole thing, Mike. Okay. Okay. If I can have your attention again. Let's see how quiet we can be. Thank you. That's a beautiful way when we are in the presence of God to remember that, that we are on our best behavior in a very reverent way. There is something I forgot, would you believe? And, and, and maybe moms and dads can encourage you to kind of practice. <clears throat> when you come up for your first communion, to bow, bow your head before receiving communion. Why do we bow our head? It's just a way of being reverent in God's presence. Now, on the day of your first communion, you will be up here first and then bow. On Sundays, when you come up for communion, you create a communion line. When the person in front of you is receiving communion, that is the time to kind of bow your head just to kind of focus yourself to be reverent in God's presence. So that, that is our special way to kind of, and, and to be a reminder for moms and dads too, that when we receive communion, that is a very reverent way and a reverent way of showing our posture is bowing our heads. Just as I would encourage us when we come into church to a genuflect before coming in the pew. Now if I can genuflect and I have two replaced knees, you young and healthy moms and dads and children can do it. To go down on your right knee just again is just a reverent way of showing that we're in the house of God and it's kind of way of, of focusing ourselves. Now some people when they receive communion, they receive directly on their in their mouth, which is an option as well. But I guess what really in the, the what the Reform, the Second Vatican Council, wants to tell us. When I made my first communion many, many moons ago, the communion was placed on your mouth and you swallowed it and, and you thought that it was kind of a mortal sin if the host touched your teeth because this was just a reverent way of receiving communion. But I want us to remember what Jesus said. Jesus said to, to take and to eat. And so to chew the host in a reverent way is very, very appropriate. It is doing what Jesus asks us to do. And the kind of thinking that your hands, your hands are not any less holy than your mouth. So to receive communion in your hands, it is perfectly appropriate. But if it's your custom and you wish to receive on the tongue, you're certainly welcome to do that. But in terms of really kind of preparing this, as we have just done, really want to say that to receive communion probably facilitates a little bit longer. And actually, it's probably a little more sanitary, to tell you the truth, than placing those, because some people's mouths are moving, and when you're placing it on, it can easily touch the tongue. And so it's to receive communion in your hand, and as encouraged, I mean, both ways are encouraged by the church, but I just want to assure you that it's not less reverent to receive in your hand, uh, although it's certainly acceptable to receive directly in your mouth. Does that make sense for moms and dads as well as for the first communicants themselves? <clears throat> yes. Very, very good. To make, the, the question was, are they encouraged to make the sign of the cross after communion. That is not in the ritual. It is not in the ritual, but it is a practice that, that many families do. Uh, but, but we kind of just follow what is in the ritual. But if you would like, it's never, I never discourage you from making the sign of the cross. Make it a thousand times during the day. So if you wish to receive communion, make the sign, you're certainly welcome to but it is not in the ritual as such, so it's just kind of a practice that can take place or not take place. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
it did, it was encouraged in some parishes more than in other parishes to tell you the truth, because again, it wasn't in the ritual, it was just, but please, if anyone makes the sign of the cross, I am never discouraged by that. In fact, please God, we make the sign of the cross. And hopefully when we come into church, we all bless ourselves with the holy water. And when we do that, we make the sign of the cross when we come into church, reminding us that we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Make sense? It makes sense. Very, very good. Okay, so maybe we could conclude with prayer. Before, and, and, and just, before we do the oh. uh, closing prayer, I just wanted to call your attention to the two sheets of paper that we gave you. One of them is a listing of all of the mass assignments. If you are a lector, if you have signed up to be a lector and have been assigned, please stay a few minutes after and come over here to buy the piano. Gift bearers will be taught that morning of First Eucharist how to come down the aisle and bring up the gifts. And the last thing is, I'll be in touch with you about the last minute details. The other sheet that you have gives a very brief highlight of how the mass goes. These, uh, in that sheet, are most of the questions that we have gotten through the years, how, what is the order? That will help you on that day to know what comes first, second, third. But also know that Father Jim, every member of the team will be here to help you. So you won't have to worry about where am I supposed to be when. So lectors, stop over for a second afterwards. And if anyone, yes. Yes, readers and lectors, stop over. I have a Every copy of the reading for you. Yes. Back in. So just, just another word in terms of photographs on this special day. You're welcome to take a photograph as the children come into Mass for the opening procession. can be a beautiful time. Hopefully they will be have their hands folded in a very reverent way as they process into church, into their pews. And then you're welcome after Mass, I will be back here and you're welcome to have as many photos as you would like. But during the Mass, especially during First Communion, would ask you to restrain as best you can from taking photos to really kind of concentrate on really the spiritual dimension uh, of the beauty of this day of your child's first communion and then the, the specialness of the day for you as a family to, to celebrate the Eucharist as the center of your prayer life. And just the, can I give a mild nudge to moms and dads that as we celebrate the beauty of your child's first communion, we really want to encourage you to make the celebration of Sunday Eucharist a regular part of your family's prayer life. You know, to take an hour a week to come together as a family, to give thanks to the Lord our God, to join together with our parish family, really is what the Lord has asked us to do <clears throat> in the third commandment and at the Last Supper on the night before he died. Now, I'm not trying to hit you over the head with that, but the strong encouragement comes from the Lord himself, really kind of to celebrate in a beautiful way the spiritual dimension of your family life. And even if your children are restless at times, they're still most, most welcome at church each and every Sunday. So if that becomes a rhythm, a part of your family life, and it's motivated by the day of your first communion, you will be many times blessed and I will assure you that you will never regret you know, making that commitment of prayer as a family to come together to, to, to the Sunday Eucharist. So that's the strongest encouragement uh, that I can give you is to really kind of making, be motivated to, yes, we live busy lives, 
Yes, we have soccer practices to go to, lacrosse, baseball, football. I have grandnieces and grandnephews and understand that very, very well. But we still can make a priority that we have five opportunities on Sunday for mass. So um, is to really make that a commitment. So just to conclude, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, O God, of all creation. From the dawning of life, you have called each of us by name. From the waters of baptism, you set each one of us on the path to this day in our spiritual journey. In your generosity, you have brought us to this time when we are blessed to journey with our precious children as they come to share in the body and blood of your son. Children, as a reminder of your baptism, we presented you with a bracelet. Do they have these bracelets? Medals or pins which will be blessed, and I will bless these bracelets. I already have blessed them one time, and I'm going to bless them again. If you could hold them up in your arm. And so may the blessings of Almighty God be with your bracelets, be with your rosaries, and more importantly, be with each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.